Let's talk pork belly. Crispy pork belly. Oh yeah, that sounds good. So I'm gonna show you how to make the crispiest pork belly that you have had. It's gonna be super fluffy, super crispy, and the meat is gonna be juicy and moist. And how are we gonna achieve this? Stick around, I'm gonna show you that in the video later. But what do you serve with the most amazing pork belly? I'm gonna show you how to make bows. If you don't know what they are, they're soft, light, fluffy, pillows of a delightful happiness. We're gonna take our pork and put them in those. I'm gonna show you how to make all of this later on in the video with all the little tips and tricks you're gonna to need to make the crispiest pork belly you have had. Right, let's get into this one. Time to smash these out. So we're gonna start with our pork belly. You need 600 grams or about 1.3 pounds. A meaty piece like this is not gonna give you too much fat when you render it out. And then we're gonna score the skin. Don't go too deep, just make little incisions. Get yourself a sharp box cutter. Work your way along until you get to the middle like this. Flip it around and score down the other side. And then we're gonna do a crisscross pattern, a bit like a diamond. Take your time with this. Don't go too deep, like I said. You're looking for this kind of a score. You can see how deep I've gone. This is perfect. If you go any deeper, it's gonna penetrate the flesh, release juices, no bueno. I'm gonna season the other side with a bit of five spice powder. Got a recipe of that on the website and a little bit of garlic powder with some salt. You don't want any of the seasoning on the skin side, so make sure you rub that all off. Make sure it's nice and dry and then put it on a tray with a rack. Pour a nice couple of spoons of salt over the top. Rub it in generously, as you can see, quite a bit has fallen through and then put that in your fridge overnight and that will dry out the skin. The next day, it is gonna look like this, super dry. You can see the cuts you've made. That is absolutely perfect. Now we need to make a home for this pork by using some foil. All you're gonna do is put it in the middle, fold it over like this. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a nice kind of cover for the meat, but we want the skin exposed. That way it will just render out the fat nicely, keep the juices in the pork, and the top is gonna go nice and crispy. So take your time, fold it over like this, make sure it's nice and snug. It is gonna shrink a little bit when it cooks, so do not worry. Now, here's a secret to getting it super crispy. Brush it with about a spoon or two of white vinegar. This dries it out big time in the oven. Put it back on a rack, roast it in an oven for an hour and a half at 225 degrees Fahrenheit or 107 degrees C. Make sure it's in this part of the oven. Okay, now let's move on to bowels. So we need 120 mils or half a cup of milk. You can use 2%, 64 mils or a third of a cup of water. Warm that up to about 105 Fahrenheit. Add two tablespoons of oil or 15 grams, two tablespoons of sugar or 27 grams, and a tablespoon or 14 grams of active dry yeast. Mix that up, cover it up, and that is blooming your yeast. Set that aside. Now you need two and a half cups or 315 grams of all-purpose flour. You can use bread flour too. Add half a teaspoon or four grams of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon or two grams of salt. Put your dough hook attachment on and then we're going going to pour in our bloomed yeast. Mix on low, then go up to medium speed for about seven to eight minutes until the dough is smooth, elastic, and a little bit sticky to the touch like this. After this, get it out onto a workbench. Briefly knead the dough for a minute or two. It's very smooth, elastic, very easy to work with. You shouldn't need any flour. It should be ready when you can give it a nice little spank like this. After you've given your dough a good spanking, put it into a bowl, cover it with a cloth until it's tripled in size, about two hours. Now we're going to make a quick little brine for our pickles. Two cups of water with about a cup of vinegar of your choice. I've used white vinegar here. Two to three tablespoons of sugar, depending on how sweet you like it, and a tablespoon of salt. Mix that all through, put it on the stove just to dissolve everything. Now, chop up your veg. I'm going to use some cucumber and some daikon. Just cut it in half, scoop out the seeds, and then cut them in nice little half moons. Not too thin, or they're just going to wilt when you pour over your hot brine. Then get about a quarter of a daikon, cut it in half like this, peel it, then just cut it into slices, and then we're just going to chop them into some battens. Nothing too crazy. We want a bit of heft to these vegetables so they have a nice crunch when you bite into them. Put them into separate containers and then pour over your hot brine and you have a super quick pickle. Just let it cool down at room temperature, store it in your fridge and you are off to the races for later. It's a great way to elevate some humble vegetables. Proper rags to riches story, that one. So let's make a sauce for our bows. We're gonna grate about 30, 40 grams of ginger and about a clove of garlic. You can use a garlic press here too as well, but nice to live on the edge a little bit and do some grating. And then we're going to use a cup of hoisin. Pick this up. It's super, super, super delicious. Lots of umami. And then we're going to add about 50 mils of white vinegar and a tablespoon of dark soy sauce. Use about just under a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and about half a teaspoon of red chili flakes. Give that all a little mix. Put it on your stove until it's nicely warmed. One or two minutes and it should look glossy like this. Squeeze in about half a lime. 
mix that through and you've got a beautiful sauce set that aside in your fridge for later you can put this on anything chicken fish anything like that and it will be delicious now our bao dough has tripled in size pretty quickly in about an hour and a half because it's quite a warm day in the kitchen so all we're going to do is just deflate it degas it like this very satisfying put that out onto a very lightly floured surface you do not need much flour with this dough it's pretty easy to work with we're just going to roll this out into a rough rectangle don't worry if it's not perfect just pick it up move it around like this keep rolling it out until it's about a quarter inch thick if you don't know what that is get a ruler or just guess don't get them too thick because they're going to steam when they cook and they like double triple and puff up so if you get them too big they're going to look mahusive right now get yourself a three and a half inch cookie cutter or you can use a wine glass uh, just go around and punch out some holes don't worry about any of the excess we're going to re-roll that up as well later pull away any of the excess dough like this and then all we're going to do with these is just spray the top with a bit of oil i used avocado there not too much give them a nice little rubbing over and then just fold them in half this is so that they don't stick when you open them later they kind of look like little tacos at this point so this is actually quite nice to see the dough is so easy to work with and then all you're going to do is just roll one out get yourself a rolling pin and then just gently roll it forward until it kind of flattens out and seals itself don't worry it's not going to stick and then put them on little pieces of parchment paper on a baking tray and then cover that with a cloth while you work through the rest of the batch. Now re-roll the rest of your scraps of dough just like this. Now weigh it and then divide it by how many bows you want. I'm gonna go for mega bows, so I'm gonna do three. I think these were about 62 grams each, if memory serves me correct. Roll it into a ball like this, flatten it out, roll these a quarter inch thick again, and we're gonna do the same process like we did before, add a little bit of oil to them, fold them over, and then roll them flat and put them on parchment. Cover these, put them in a tray, and let them proof for about an hour and a half. They'll be almost tripled in size. Then you're gonna set up a steamer. I don't have a bamboo steamer basket, so I'm gonna make do with this one. Get some water in your pan, get it hot, put a couple in at a time, maybe two, maybe three, and then you're gonna put the lid on and steam them for about seven to eight minutes, depending on the level of steam. It should be nice and puffy like this. Don't take the lid off too early or they're gonna shrink and go wrinkly, and you don't wanna overcrowd your pan. You should have some beautiful fluffy boughs just like this. Oh yeah, those look beautiful. Now you can make these ahead of time or just give them to Chef Michael to freshen up, but when they're done fresh, they should be nice and steamy and fluffy like this. So after an hour and a half, your pork should look like this. We're gonna crank the oven up to 500, but we've got this little dip in the middle, so we wanna raise that up so we get even crackling. You can use veg here, but I just use a couple of bits of foil. Put your pork back underneath so you've got a nice, even kind of layer. And then we're going to brush this with about one spoon or so of neutral oil. You can use canola or anything like that. Brush that all over your skin. Make sure you get it in all the little nooks and crannies and along the side. This is going to give you next level crackling and a very nice, even finish. Sprinkle with a nice, generous amount of salt, making sure to get that into all the nooks and crannies and roast it in the same part of the oven back at 500 Fahrenheit or 260 degrees C. Now, if a little bit is coloring a little bit faster than you want, you can put a bit of foil on like this, but expect the smoke alarm to go off like this. After 25 or 35 minutes, your crackling should look like this, depending on your oven. Look at that, that is glorious. That deserves a dance. Listen to how crunchy and crispy this is. Let this rest for about 10-15 minutes in the foil just to kind of reabsorb any juices and we're going to cut this by flipping it over, makes it a little bit easier, and cut straight through. You can just see how many juices are dripping out of this pork belly. Now this is quite a meaty bit of pork belly, but still, there is a lot of moisture coming out of this. Absolutely gorgeous. If you've got a more fattier piece, you're going to have way more juices coming out because obviously that's all the fat rendered out. Now slice it up like this. You could just serve that as it is, but we're going to put these in our bowels. Open one up, pour in some of that lovely sauce, put in a couple of pieces of your daikon, put in a nice wedge of that pork belly, add in your cucumbers, and you have an unbelievable pork belly bow. I mean, come on, just look at that. Make a bunch of them. Get ready to have all your friends over and have some of the best times of your life. Oh yeah, that sounds good. That is some crispy pork belly. Just look how crispy that is. Holy crap. Okay, cheers. That is awesome. The bow buns are so fluffy, it's super soft. You got those lovely pickles, they've got a nice little crunch to them. They really lift up that fatty pork. And then you've got this crackling, which is like next level. You can just hear how crunchy this is. Now that's crispy pork. 
and put them in a bow like this and you are going to have a very good time indeed. Right, if you like content like this, please like, comment and subscribe. I appreciate all of you that have done so, so far. Okay, time for a bit of lunch. I'll see you in the next one.